they were told it was the worst idea in history. And that wasn't a tweet. to write a rock opera about the last week, the passion of Jesus Christ from the perspective of who? Judas. Worst idea in history. No one would touch it with funding for a stage production. So, Andrew Lloyd Webber and Tim Rice released their work, their worst idea in history, as an album. Yeah, I hope that surprises you. That's actually the original album cover in 1970. That should say 70, not 71. Well, it sold a lot of albums. A lot of albums. And so then people became interested in a Broadway production. Uh, this is the, um, the album you were looking for, right? This is from the film, 1973. But here's the playbill in 1971, the original playbill for Broadway. So it was a very short three years from the worst idea in history to a long-running Broadway show, right? Ever... Since that day, Jesus asked his disciples, after hearing all the buzz about him, who do you say I am? People have offered their own answers to that question. And there are lots and lots and lots of ways to answer it, aren't there? You can have theological answers. You could have answers from Uh, church dogma, you can have answers of church history, you can have all kinds of answers. But I think, I think Weber and Rice got this right. Instead of portraying Jesus through one of those lenses, they tried to portray him relationally through the relationships he had with all of those key players of his last week, those very real people who were part of the end of his life. And so Weber and Rice portrayed Jesus as much loved. How many of you saw the latest John Legend version? Yeah? They portrayed him as much hated. And they portrayed him surrounded by people who were really deeply confused, wondering, what does all this mean? And I think that's probably pretty realistic, don't you? I think they got it right, particularly in Mary's solo in Act One. And if you have seen the play or the, one of the films or the live, live concert, you know that this solo begins with a reprise of what I would call Mary's lullaby, right? Where she's trying to calm Jesus and everybody else around down because there's a lot of anxiety building in this last week, and she sings, try not to get worried. Try not to turn on to problems. And as he falls asleep, she begins her solo. I don't know how to love him. I would call it a lament, biblically, right? It's not a song of celebration. It's really a song that brings out all of her own confusion of mixed feelings in her heart and her understanding and her lack of understanding all mixed together. I don't know how to love him. She's not in her head about who is Jesus. She's in her heart about her relationship with him. 
I don't know how to love him. And she ends up asking, what's it all about? What's it all about? This Jesus she has come to know and love. I ask the same question more often than you might think I do. What is it all about with this ancient Palestinian Jew to whom I have given my heart and my life? And maybe you have too. What's it all about? How do I know him? How have I come to love him? How have you, if you do? If you do. There are many ways we have come to know Jesus through the four Gospels, and each one of them has their own perspective on answering, who do you say I am? But they have in common the writer, the author's love for Jesus, the Christ. So let's kind of look at some of these ways that we have come to know Jesus and perhaps how you have come to love him. Because I'm guessing while there's thousands and thousands of ways to answer the question, uh, who do you say I am? There's probably just a handful of ways you can point to when you answer the question, how do I love him? Moving from the head to the heart. There's Jesus, the teacher. Who was it who said, uh, I think, Kathy, right? The Sermon on the Mount. So many people love Jesus for his teaching, for his spiritual wisdom shared. Honestly, it wasn't all that radically new. It was basically Judaism, ancient Judaism, but he had new ways of presenting it and refocusing uh, people on what ancient Judaism was all about for his time. The teachings of Jesus. Do you love him because of his teachings that have settled deeply in your own heart? How many of you would say you have been healed by Jesus' love? I would. You know Jesus as a healer in your life or in the life of someone close to you. Jesus the healer, much, much loved. Jesus the good shepherd. This is a painting from a catacomb in Rome from around the second century. And I want you to notice a couple of things. You see Jesus has no beard and he has short hair. All portrayals, earliest portrayals of him show him like that. He doesn't get long hair and a beard till several centuries later, about another couple hundred years. But I also want you to notice the animals below him. What do you see? What? Yeah? You see a goat? On his, on his left, right? And you see a sheep on his right. Do you know that story? Huh? No one remembers that story? Back to Bible study. <laughs> Dave Hinshaw, where are you? The separation of the sheep from the goats, right? It's a scary story for a lot of people, and I think a lot of people have misused it to make it a scary story. But notice who's on his neck. It's the goat. It's the goat that he carries and tends to, right? Jesus, the good shepherd, is looking for the goats before he even goes for the sheep, at least for the early, earliest Christians. Do you know Jesus as a prodigal who has been welcomed home? Maybe you do, and you love him for that. I've heard such amazing witness, especially from young people who have been to prison and back, who know and love the Jesus with a goat on his shoulders. This is a little later where, yeah, he's the shepherd with all the sheep around him. 
the good ones well. <laughs> Think about what does it mean to tend sheep? Anyone grow up on a sheep ranch? No? You should talk to someone if you ever get the chance about what it really means to tend sheep. Leads me beside still waters, right? Protection from danger. There's a lot about knowing and loving Jesus as your shepherd, the one who guides you. And then there's Jesus the prophet. I bet a lot of you love him as one who, like the ancient prophets before him, made public witness above all in the temple, and that's probably why he was arrested, tried, and executed, because of his public act of basically wrecking the economy of the country and uh, you know, destroying the uh, outer courts of the temple. He had gone too far. He had gone too far. Some of us love the prophetic witness of Jesus. And then there's the Jesus who forgives sin. He tells us, now you're free. Go and sin no more. Go and sin no more. And gives us the power to live in that freedom. Jesus, the one who defends us from those who would stone us. Do you know that, Jesus? Who steps in? If you're perfect, throw the first stone. Go ahead. Do you know and love that, Jesus? I love this, Zacchaeus. I love the story. Jesus, the one who goes looking for the people no one else likes or wants to be with. Zacchaeus, come down. I'm having dinner at your house tonight. That Jesus. I love that Jesus. I'm still trying to be molded by that Jesus. So if I say to one of you, I'm having dinner at your house tonight, <laughs> don't be offended. I'm just trying. Do you love that Jesus? He calls us out of trees to come down so we can be with him, with him. And then there's Jesus I like to call the reality check. No, you've got seven husbands. Ouch. Have you ever had an ouch moment with Jesus in your life? where he called you on your stuff. I need that, Jesus. Do you? I love that, Jesus. It's hard. But he's faithful, and he calls me on it. And then there's the Jesus that that mother in the hospital right now needs. Jesus, the one who comes to us in our deepest, deepest sorrows. Jesus the Comforter. Do you know that Jesus in your life who comes to you when your heart is breaking, when some part of you is being crucified? Do you know that Jesus? Do you know his prayer in Gethsemane for others? And then there's Jesus the King. The early Christians, once uh, Constantine took over, really enjoyed portraying Jesus as Caesar, right? It had become the Holy Roman Empire, and so they, they finally got Jesus on the throne of Caesar. So you find lots of um, those pictures and portrayals of Jesus. And then there's later... Jesus, who is king of the whole universe. Forget the Roman Empire, right? There's this cosmic Jesus. Everybody is under the authority of Jesus' kingdom. He holds the world in his hand. Is that the Jesus you know? But then I would remind you that the Gospels show us a very different King Jesus by his own definition 
the one who comes so humbly, comes with all the power and authority of God, but humbly, opposite Caesar, or opposite the governor, on purpose. Another public witness. And then there's Jesus, our high priest, in the book of Hebrews. And uh, this is a Jewish image. This is what those first century Christian Jews would have imagined Jesus to look like. But again, after Constantine, he starts looking like the Pope. Right? Jesus, our high priest who stands between us and God to bring us together. That's what they mean by Jesus, our high priest, one who stands in between the gap to heal it. Is that the Jesus you love? And then there's the one that I really consider the cosmic one. Jesus, the Alpha and the Omega, without whom nothing was created. The Jesus who's so far beyond. Jesus, the one principle that all those uh, physicists are looking for, right? Jesus, the cosmic Christ, who makes all things one. Many of those live in my heart, my love for Jesus. How about you? But at this point in my own discipleship, I think the one that captures me the most is this. It's Jesus who is my way on a daily, even hourly basis. Jesus, not a destination to get to, but a way to follow. Jesus the way. How do you love Jesus? What I want you to notice is that all of those attributes belong to the great I am. And so here we are again with your love for Jesus, which is essentially your yada, your way that you know God through the love of Jesus that he showed to you first in those stories and in your life. The way we love Jesus is the way he showed us what God's love is all about. What's it all about? It's about the love of God. It's about the love of God that transforms us into hearts that love not only God, but so much more of God's beautiful creation.